Hi, I'm going to talk about understanding glioblastoma multiform. Glioblastoma multiform, WHO classification name glioblastoma, is the most common and most aggressive malignant primary brain tumor in humans, involving glial cells and accounting for 52% of all functional tissue brain tumor cases and 20% of all intracranial tumors. GBM is rare, with incidence of 2-3 cases per 100,000 in Europe and North America. It presents two variants, giant cell glioblastoma and gliosarcoma. Treatment can involve chemotherapy, radiation and surgery. Median survival with standard of care radiation and chemotherapy with temozolomide is 15 months. Although no randomized control trials have been done, surgery remains the standard of care. Signs and symptoms Although common symptoms of the disease include seizure, nausea and vomiting, headache, memory loss, and hemiparesis, the single most prevalent symptom is a progressive memory, personality, or neurological deficit due to temporal and frontal lobe involvement. The kind of symptoms produced depends highly on the location of the tumor, more so than on its pathological properties. The tumor can start producing symptoms quickly, but occasionally is an asymptomatic condition until it reaches an enormous size. Causes for unknown reasons, GBM occurs more commonly in males. Most glioblastoma tumors appear to be sporadic, without any genetic predisposition. Glioblastoma has been associated with the viruses SV40, HHV6, and cytomegalovirus. There also appears to be a small link between ionizing radiation and glioblastoma. Some also believe that there may be a link between polyvinyl chloride and glioblastoma. A 2006 analysis links brain cancer to lead exposure in the workplace. There is an association of brain tumor incidence and malaria, suggesting that the Anopheles mosquito, the carrier of malaria, might transmit a virus or other agent that could cause glioblastoma or that the immunosuppression associated with malaria could enhance viral replication. Pathogenesis glioblastoma multiform tumors are characterized by the presence of small areas of necrotizing tissue that is surrounded by anaplastic cells, this characteristic, as well as the presence of hyperplastic blood vessels, differentiates the tumor from grade 3 astrocytomas, which do not have these features. There are four subtypes of glioblastoma. 97% of tumors in the classical subtype carry extra copies of the epidermal growth factor receptor gene, and most have higher than normal expression of epidermal growth factor receptor, whereas the gene TP53, which is often mutated in glioblastoma, is rarely mutated in this subtype. In contrast, the proneural subtype often has high rates of alterations in TP53, and in CFRA, the gene encoding a type platelet-derived growth factor receptor, and in IL, the gene encoding isocitrate dehydrogenase 1. The mesenchymal subtype is characterized by high rates of mutations or other alterations in NF1, the gene encoding neurofibrom in 1 and fewer alterations in the EGFR gene and less expression of EGFR than other types. Many other genetic alterations have been described in glioblastoma, and the majority of them are clustered in three pathways, the P53, RB, and the PI3K-AKT. Methylation is described to impair DNA transcription and therefore, expression of the management enzyme. Indeed, management methylation is associated with an improved response to treatment with DNA damaging chemotherapeutics, such as temozolomide. GBMs usually form in the cerebral white matter, grow quickly, and can become very large before producing symptoms. 
less than 10% form more slowly following degeneration of low-grade astrocytoma or anaplastic astrocytoma. These are called secondary GBMs and are more common in younger patients. The tumor may extend into the meninges or ventricular wall, leading to high protein content in the cerebrospinal fluid, as well as an occasional pyocytosis of 10 to 100 cells, mostly lymphocytes. About 50% of GBMs occupy more than one lobe of a hemisphere or are bilateral. Tumors of this type usually arise from the cerebrum and may rarely exhibit the classic infiltration across the corpus callosum, producing a butterfly glioma. The tumor may take on a variety of appearances, depending on the amount of hemorrhage, necrosis, or its age. A CT scan will usually show an inhomogeneous mass with a hyperdense center and a variable ring of enhancement surrounded by edema. Mass effect from the tumor and edema may compress the ventricles and cause hydrocephalus. Cancer cells with stem cell like properties have been found in glioblastomas. A biomarker for cells in glioblastomas that exhibit cancer stem cell properties, the transcription factor HES3, has been shown to regulate their number when placed in culture. Furthermore, glioblastoma multiform exhibits numerous alterations in genes that encode for ion channels, including upregulation of GBK potassium channels and CLC3 chloride channels. It has been hypothesized that by upregulating these ion channels, glioblastoma tumor cells can facilitate increased ion movement over the cell membrane, thereby increasing H2O movement through osmosis, which aids glioblastoma cells to change cellular volume very rapidly. This is helpful in their extremely aggressive invasive behavior, because quick adaptations in cellular volume can facilitate movement through the sinuous extracellular matrix of the brain. Diagnosis MH1B Sagittal MRI with contrast of a glioblastoma WHO grade 4 in a 15 year old boy. When viewed with MRI, glioblastomas often appear as ring enhancing lesions. It is very difficult to treat glioblastoma due to several complicating factors. The tumor cells are very resistant to conventional therapies. The brain is susceptible to damage due to conventional therapy. The brain has a very limited capacity to repair itself. Thanks for watching. Please see my link in description for more information.